Mosasaurus versus Megalodon. You know you want to draw it, so stay tuned and you'll learn how to. G'day there folks, I'm Beanie, you're watching Beanie Draws. It's been a little while since I've drawn something, so I figured with the release of The Meg and Jurassic World about a month or so ago, I figured why not have the two of these guys going against each other. This is a very rough sketch as you can see, but I figured I'm gonna turn it into a proper drawing. Now for this video, we're going back to traditional methods. So get out your pencil case, if you want one of these, pencil cases you can hit me up on my Redbubble shop where you can buy this pencil case and I'm planning on getting a few more pencil cases out as well so open her up get your pencils out and let's begin for this drawing we're going to be using a combination of Bic mechanical pencils and maybe a bit of Pentel 120 A3DX 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil both of which will be in the descriptions below they will be affiliate links but you can also use any old pencil as long as you've got a pencil and eraser it will work for you. Okay, to start off with, we want to draw in a rough composition of the bodies. So put in the Megalodon, like so. Swishing it out to a tail. Make a little triangle tail like that. And then Megalodon, uh, not Megalodon, then Mosasaurus. Have the bit of the Mosasaurus head there, and we'll have the body coming down around here, curving down to a fan tail, like so. And we'll fix that up. Next, we want to chuck in some fins. that and another fin there and another fin there we'll refine the shape of the megalodon a little bit and we'll chuck in its its uh, dorsal fin up there and we'll pop in some of its swimming fins around there. The other swimming fin will probably be hidden by the Mosasaurus. So I'm going to refine the shape a little bit. Like that. Make the fin a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to shape out the Mosasaurus bit. Making the body sort of wide there, narrowing it down to the tail. So bring it down to there, curving it down, so we've got a nice swooing, swooing, is that even a word? A flowing swoo, I'm inventing that word. And the top of the fins for the Mosasaurus will be about there. Bring it up, so around here with the body, for the right side. And then this flipper will be kind of narrow there, expanded out, and then probably not as long, probably more about there. Bring it down to maybe about there. Gonna bring the Megalodon's body up a little bit. I think we'll reposition the fin up there. And we're going to have its mouth like so. The bottom of the mouth is going to be over the top of the Mosasaurus flipper and the top of the mouth is going to be under the Mosasaurus flipper so it looks like that the Mosasaurus flipper is inside the Meg's mouth. Like so. I'm going to put some little lines around so it looks like it's connected and refine the shape of the body a little bit bringing a little bit of a line up through that bit of a flipper so it looks like a bit of its body is hiding over the top of the flipper just for a little bit of three-dimensionalism and we'll make the eye of the megalodon maybe about there bring the tip of the nose maybe make the tip of the nose a little bit higher up like that bring it down about there and make the mouth like 
so. And then bring a line through the nose, around the mouth, and then through the side of the body down to about here. So you can kind of get a gist of the three-dimensionalism because this is the bottom, this is the side, but the side will get hidden by the bottom eventually because sharks are tubular creatures. Tubular, dude. And bring that shark fin out to about that. So I'm going to put in some little fins around here. Um, the other fin would be here, but that's been hidden by the Mosasaurus, so it's not that big of a deal. I was going to have the, the tail a little bit longer, but I think because a Megalodon's got quite a big chunky body, I'm going to make the tail thinner. So I've got that line there, and we'll erase that bit of line. And we'll make the tail a little bit more curved like a shark. So we've got a nice curved shark tail. Now I'm debating whether to make the shark fin come up there if it's right where it is. Up just a little bit. That's okay. We are allowed to reposition pieces when it's not all locked down. Don't get too hung up about drawing it exactly perfect the first time around because you have a pencil and a razor, you can erase things. So yeah, make the shark fin about there. And then swim it out like that. Yeah, swim it out, I don't think that's a technical term. And I'm gonna bring in some lines like here. So it looks like it's kind of connected and not just attached. Because you don't really want a hard edge straight off the bat. You want it to look like it's kind of organically connected. Draw a bit of a shark fin there. And curving it out like that. So I think it's more or less where it used to be anyway, but that's not a big deal. Gonna refine the shape a little bit more. And yeah, we'll definitely have the shark fin, dorsal fin, up around here. It'd be probably connected around there, but a lot of its body is going to be covering it a bit. So you only see a little bit of it. And to be honest, I think I made the fin a little bit too long. That's alright. Have the flipper be a fin shorter. And I'm going to add a line here to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional it's not just so flat because it would have a bit of a curve around the front. So it'd be a bit of an aerodynamic wing shape. You know like how a plane has a sort of a curved edge to the tip of their wings. So I'm doing the same for the shark. Then I'm going to add in some gills. I'm going to refine the mouse just a little bit and I'm going to start putting in some teeth. Don't want them to be too big though because the megalodon is big so I want the teeth to be kind of smaller to emphasize how big the megalodon is. Trying to get that three-dimensional shape going, so I'm just drawing in a few lines to help determine where the bottom of it is, and a bit of it's going to be covered by the Mosasaurus, so it'll probably be about the edge of the Megalodon will probably be connected with the edge of the Mosasaurus, to be honest. So I think it. We need to make the mouth come up more about there, so it's more in line with the top half. And then have that mouth like that. We'll have the teeth. Gonna draw in those gums. 
We're just gonna fix up those teeth. Put some those lines. The lines help make the gum of the... See, I've never really drawn a shark before, so I'm just kind of going by what I can see, and it looks like they've got some little wiggle lines around the mouth. And we're going to add in the shark teeth. Find those shark teeth a bit more. And I'm going to erase a bit of that. Gently tapping my eraser so I'm not really going too hard at the erasing, just some light erasing. So just tap and dab, don't force it on there too much, just go. Tut, 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 tut. Gonna add in a little bit of line down for the bottom part of the mouth. And I'm actually thinking about changing the placement of the eye a little bit, making it up more about around there and making it sort of slanted. So it looks like it's more at the top half of the head. So we'll have a bit of an angle so it looks like it's at the top, not sort of right on the side. Well, we're here, we might as well fix up the Mosasaurus fin a little bit. I should be working on the Mosasaurus, but I want to refine the shark just a little bit more. So you can see it's got a slight curve in there. It's not a huge curve, it's just a very slight one. Fix up the fin. And then we'll start working a bit more on the Mosasaurus. So I'm gonna shape out its body some more. And this is gonna be slightly difficult because I haven't actually seen a picture of the Mosasaurus from this particular angle, so I'm doing a lot of guesswork here. So you're gonna have to bear with me as I try and get this difficult angle of the Mosasaurus head. Doing some lines, some curved lines with the back of the neck. Then I'm gonna do a tip of the nose. And I'm gonna put in some more sort of curved lines here for the neck to be honest I'm not entirely I like the shape I'm not entirely happy with the placement of the head I think the head's a little bit too low for my liking for this composition so annoyingly I'm going to erase it and maybe we'll have it higher like that so I'll have the head up there bring it along there and the eye will be about here, the mouse, because I also want to see more of the mouse in there. We weren't going to really see too much of it. Got to reshape the neck and the back of the head, back of that skull. Of the head. Seems like it's got a bit of a long bit of skull going on there. I'm just, I, and you probably notice I'm just like kind of putting in extra little bit of lines just kind of where I think they need to be going. It's very, very difficult to. Again, I'm using photos of the actual toy as a reference. Because unfortunately, Jurassic World Evolution won't have Mosasaurus for quite some time, so I can't use that game as a reference. So made the eyebrow ridge too tall. Try and draw the eye like that. Made the back of the skull. Erase this because this does not make sense. Draw an indentation line. The indentation line seems to work better. There's a bit of a lump there from the back. A bit of a lump there for the back of the skull. A little bit of a ridge in the eyebrow there. Gonna make the top of the head a little bit, well we want to have a little bit of a bump. A few little bumps here because that's where some of the rougher textures and the osteoderms and all that are sitting. So put that there. And because it's all foreshortened it's very flat around here as well. Try and refine that edge just so you can kind of tell it's the back of the skull more. Bit of a curve. 
It's a bit of a challenge. So put the back of the snails like that. We're getting there. We're crafting this head, crafting the snout as we go along. Putting the curve there for the bottom. Put a few little bumples. Gonna have some of the teeth. So I'm not completely happy with the placement of that line. When you're drawing, you can you can sometimes notice that if a line is just a little bit too high or a little bit too low, it can make a big difference into the shape of things. So I'm just removing that line and bringing it down, and I think that helps a bit. I'm also going to remove these curved lines. I'm going to sculpt the back end a bit so it's a bit broader and wider. I like to think of drawing sometimes as more like sculpting with clay, but you're using a pencil instead. You're just kind of adding bits, subtracting bits, and you can keep doing that. You can keep adding and subtracting until the shape and the form looks more how you want. Because you, I don't know if you're like me, but I can generally see the shape in my head but translating the shape in my head to the actual paper, that's the challenge. So now I'm just gonna put in the line here to help that three-dimensional flow and the edge because the Mosasaurus does have some osteoderm ridges and bumps along its neck. I'm gonna refine the top part a little bit more. The head is looking okay now. Might narrow it down a little bit. Yep, that's looking good. And I'll put just a touch of the lower mouth down here so we can see that it actually has a lower mouth, but we won't see much of it because the Meg is going to be covering most of its mouth. But just a little bit of a slither of mouth there is good. Gonna chuck in some more teeth into the Meg's mouth. Okay, so we're gonna bring in the Mosasaurus flipper a little bit. Gonna have it come in like that, and it goes into a bit of a point from the looks of it. I've already done this once before, but the first time I drew this was a bit difficult as well. And again, sometimes I'll like have a bit of a flipper here, and then like, you know what? The tail over here doesn't look like it's quite in proportion with this flipper, so I take it down around here, then I continue it down this way, and tidy that up a little bit, strengthen that line for some good contrast. And now, to continue on with the body, we've got to emphasize the fact that it's a three-dimensional cylind cylindrical shape. So I'm going to draw in some circles and curved lines to kind of emphasize the cylindrical three-dimensional nature of it, kind of like a wireframe. I'm pretty sure you've all seen a wireframe at some point. So I am just roughly loosely drawing in these curved pieces so you can really get a good idea of the the form and the size and the mass. I find it quite easy to visualize the three-dimensional shape of things. I know not everyone has that ability so that's why I'm just drawing in these where I see these three-dimensional wireframe curves going and if you're having trouble getting things to look three-dimensional, try doing some wire mesh uh, lines to help you out. Then you can kind of get it. I mean, again, it's easy for me to do because, I don't know, it just seems to be a natural gift. But um, hopefully me drawing it can help you sort of see the three-dimensional weight of it. So we're going to start drawing in some of these hard osteoderms which will go from the middle 
line along the back. So the middle line will kind of be like, so, so it's broad around here. And as you can see, the cylinder changes uh, direction. So we'll take this line and bring it down here. Then bring it down again. And the Mosasaurus tail will be here. So we'll take that line and we'll connect the top of the line to the top of the Mosasaurus tail at the end. Gonna draw in that edge of the shape. There seems to be three edges, or well, three main edges for the Mosasaurus back, so I'm going to draw in those now. They kind of, I, I suppose they probably finish up around there. So I'm drawing in those curved edges. And this edge will vanish off to this side because there's more of this side of the Mosasaurus showing than this side. And then we'll bring in that curve line around there. And start putting in the spike osteoderm things that runs along its back. Using that line that we drew there as a reference guide. And as we get closer to this curved end, it's foreshortened, so the spikes will be a little bit closer to each other, and then they spread out. Kind of like how you see the spread it closer together there, and then they spread out a bit. And then these little spikes will eventually turn into kind of like quills. They're kind of like a, a, a quilly fan of sorts. It's going to have a few little spines going along here. And you can kind of think of these spines kind of like a kind of like a paddle just like a crocodile when you think about it it's kind of got that sort of um paddle rod like um basically a paddle so i'm drawing these out making them connect a little bit more at the bottom i think again you can you can refine these you can make them look a little bit more you can refine them and perfect them actually I might make it flip out around there a bit more bring it out to about there I'm giving it a little bit of a flick down to about there. So I think we'll start putting in some of these armor-like lines. It's kind of hard to figure out what these are. Osteo they're not osteoderms. They sort of are osteoderms. They're just kind of like, you know, rough ridges, kind of like the back of a crocodile. And then around here, they turn more paddle-like. I'll have to research around here briefly to get a proper idea of what the actual structure of the tail looks like because I haven't seen all that many reference photos of the, the final uh, Mosasaurus because it's usually moving so it's all blurred. Around here though it's usually like those lines that you see on the top of a crocodile or on the top of the Indominus Rex. So it's got these um, osteoderm, pretty sure that's the term for it, osteoderm armoured ridges. So these ridges are definitely hidden there. And you can follow the shape of that little wireframe mesh thing that I did. Obviously not all that wireframe mesh is gonna stay there. I'm gonna erase most of that, but it gives you an idea of where the curves and the flow and motion is. So after doing a little bit more research, the toy 
shows that there's like some little um, lumps down here but it doesn't seem like it, it's quite like that in the, the movie version so what I'm doing is I'm just putting in some of the edge um, osteoderm spike things around the edge of the top part of the armor I guess you'd call it and then it goes up around here so you can still see the, the spiky bits technically called osteoderms but I still like the term spiky bits so go around here so some more spiky bits around here and as helpful as that wireframe was I think it's now time to erase the wireframe and just keep the osteoderm parts so I'm gonna do this very carefully when using the eraser on your pencil make sure you've got a high quality pencil because sometimes if you're using like a, a lead pencil sometimes the erasers aren't very good quality and you'll end up leaving more red marks and then you'll be very very annoyed to be honest sometimes I don't even know why they put those erasers on pencils because those erasers are horrible and have ruined many of my drawings when I was a kid so I stopped using them very promptly you're better off using an eraser like this if it's a white eraser it's fine if it's a red eraser you run the risk of leaving stains on your page and I've left lots of red stains when I've been using those red erasers which is not good and again I'm sort of dabbing as well might even make these edge spikes a little lighter so now to refine that I will give some of these uh, ridges along the back some more refinement Now I've just refined the body a bit more. I'm gonna put in some curved lines. The trouble is sometimes the nature of lead means it's more reflective. So it, while it looks sharp for me on the camera, it's not quite so. Continuing on, I'm gonna have this flipper which is going to be mostly hidden by the Megalodon's tail. So put it in like that. The other flipper, which I guess technically is probably more up around there. If I put it up around there, how will that go? That might actually work a little bit better. So I'll we'll draw in that flipper up there. Seems to be a bit pointed. Then we can erase this a little bit. Then I'm gonna put some little textures, some little line textures in there. So I just put little tidbits in there just to kind of make it look like it's got more going on than just being some straight lines. Then I'm gonna put in its, its sort of wobbly connecting lines around there. There would be some around that end, but it's covered by the back then put them around there and put some little lines that just they're just kind of like texture lines to help give it a bit more solidness just so it's not quite like a flat image i just put little, little some of these lines in there just to give a bit more detail do that around the tail. I just put them in randomly, I don't care too much about their exact placement. Then 
then I'm refining the spines along the tail, tidying it up. It's always about refining and then tidying where you want to tidy. There's nothing wrong with erasing things. At this stage, I consider erasing very much like drawing extra detail. So you take away little tiny little bits and clean up and refine. Fixing up that tail. Put in that tail. And I'm going to put in the lower part of the shark tail. Tidying up that bit of mouse. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to first tidy that up as well. All right, I forgot to put in some textures around here for this part of the Mosasaurus flipper. Might put some little, little lumpy bits around there. Just so it looks like it's, I know, organic and not just, yeah, some lumpy bits there, some little lines for lumpy bits there. I want to refine the eye a little bit more. Even though you never really fully see the eye of the Mosasaurus I've found, except for that scene in uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, I'm still a little bit annoyed by how underutilized the Mosasaurus actually is in the movies. We only ever get to see it, you know, jumping out. I'd like to see it on screen for more than like, you know, 10 seconds. That would be nice. But anyway, that's the Mosasaurus for the most part, I think. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add in a bit of shading to the shark. As you can see, using a mechanical pencil for shading isn't as easy. And I'm only putting a bit of shading sort of in these edges for now. Just so you can get a nice clear contrast between the Meg and the Mosasaurus. So I'm making these lines darker to get good contrast. And then I'm just gonna use my finger and smudge it out a bit. See how quick and easy that was? Boom, then you get a nice big smudging mark on your finger. Then you gotta be careful not to smear it all over your page. So with the magic of editing, I will now wash my finger. Well, actually, I'm also gonna chuck in a little bit of shading in here. So now I'm gonna put in a little bit of line around the shark, the Meg, as it were, as a nice little bit of because they, they have a bit of a white underneath and a bit of a grayish black above. I mean, no one actually knows what a Megalodon properly looked like, but, you know, they're very similar to sharks, so it's not a great leap of what they would have looked like. I'm going to tidy it up, and I'm going to give it a bit of colouring. Refining, always refining. <laughs> Gonna tidy it up around here. Could even put some like little black splotches as well. Just give a little bit of extra texture. So just put a few little black splotches, why not? Now I'm gonna make it a little bit shady. Technically the lighting is coming from above, so you wouldn't really put some shading up there, but I'm still going to. Shading there. See, for this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm considering shading as more of an element of contrast. So we've got that fin going, looking good. And tidying it up around here. And I'm gonna shade it in here, just with a light little wash of lead on its side, barely touching, just leaving enough lead just to give it a bit of something to help it pop.
doing the same down here. Tidy it up a little bit more. And then hopefully without ruining it, I am going to now just add in a little bit of splash to really make this thing dynamic and so you can sort of tell that it's an action scene. So I'm adding some little dynamic splash marks. I'm going to add little splash marks around, around the form. Just adding a little dynamic line so you can use these lines if you want. Okay, the shark is going to be underwater for the most part. We'll have some splashy marks, so some splosh lines. Technical term there, splosh. If I can find some white pencil, I'd like to go over that with a bit of a reflection. I'm gonna put some shading in here. Just in the edges, again, for the contrast. I'm gonna add in some lines for the ripples in the water. Uh, there probably would be a lot more um, splash marks, but I don't want to overtake the whole thing with splash. I just want it to be sort of more like an impression. I'm just gonna have some splish splash going on around here as well. Kind of harder to do from the other side, I find. Might put some motion drip marks. It can be very random, so you don't have to be too particular. Some little drip marks kind of helps make it look like it's, you know watery and wet we'll put some more splash down there okay try and make some more sploosh impact lines put some drips so it looks like they're going smash actually i want to put a little bit of a white line in there Let's see if i can do with this Pencil. Okay, the last thing I want to add, just to give a uh, impression of just how big these guys actually are, I'm going to include some pteranodons or pterodactyls or whatever you want to call them. Might put one here. And these ones are a little bit. Uh, a little bit smaller, I guess, than the ones in Jurassic World. Let's put in some wings. Little head. And these aren't going to be like the Jurassic World ones, because I don't like the Jurassic World pterodactyls or pteranodons. I much prefer the Pteranodons from Jurassic Park 3, which are about the only good, well, I don't mind the Spinosaurus so much, but you know. Feet. shape a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
So that one nearly got eaten. Not the best in the world, but maybe I can improve them a little bit. Okay. Make less shadow under the nut. And then, just for a final touch, I'm going to put some shadows down here. Maybe I'm just going to use a lead. Same like that. And try and smudge that with a pencil. Uh, let's just do. Let's just use the fingers. Probably do need to refine it a little bit. Actually, that's right. I can use an eraser to get rid of the harder lines. Cheeky with these little Don't want to erase too much of the detail we've already put in. But I think that's good. Of course naturally now I want to put in more shadows. That'll probably do it. 
So, that's the end of this incredibly long video. Let me know if you got right to the end. I decided to put the final picture in there just to give you a few moments to look at it, to appreciate it, but really, by now, you should have drawn your own version. Unless you just like watching my videos. If you just like watching it and you can't be bothered drawing, let me know in the comments below as well, because I really like hearing from people who don't draw and just watch. But otherwise, Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you, <laughs> I was going to say if you want to watch the time lapse version then uh, there's a link down below, but chances are if you've got this far, you don't need to watch the time lapse version, you've uh, made it through to the end. But otherwise, thank you for watching, I have even more drawings coming along, so if you want to see even more of those, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I have about oh, 170 odd drawings available and even more coming along. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this channel's only really just started. So thanks for joining me and don't forget to send me your artwork to Instagram and to Twitter. All my details will be in the description below. So uh, have a rest and um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Cheerio for now.